Welcome back to the Redefine Effects YouTube channel, everyone. So today we're doing this multiverse portal. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's jump right into it. So first we need to go under create splines and then make a star. Just click and drag and then you need to define the sharpness. So maybe something like this and you wanna make it a five point star. I think it's six by default. So then just rotate and hit A and then rotate 90 degrees and raise this up. Then hold shift and drag to make a copy, scale this one down uh, quite a bit and move it back here. We're gonna need that later. You can just make a tie flow, open the editor. Let's do a birth operator per frame and we wanna give birth 225 particles per frame. Then do position object and I want to give some thickness to the star, so I'll just go under rendering, say enable in render, enable in viewport, and maybe set the thickness to like three centimeters, and you can make it an editable poly, and then just pick display, we can do large dots, and make them yellow as always, so we can see that our particles are being born on the surface of the star. Now I want to give these particles a shape, to turn them into these sort of crystals. So let's do a shape operator, make it 3D and select chunks round. You can set the display to geometry and now you can see we have some small chunks showing up. Now I actually want them to start at scale zero and then slowly grow up. So we need to do a scale operator, set it to absolute and just make it zero so they're gone and then we can add another scale operator this time however we'll set the timing to continuous because we need them to grow up over time and set this to maybe like 500 percent and this needs to be set to absolute so now we have some big chunks showing up and to make them grow over time you just need to decrease the interpolation so i'll set this to 0.1 and now we have them growing up over time. So just to randomize their rotation, let's add a rotation operator. And I want them to collide with each other. So let's add a particle physics operator. Um, you can set the radius to 0.5 centimeters and everything else can stay at default, right? So we're slowly getting somewhere. It's always a good idea to save your work before you start doing simulations because it can crash. So basically what I want to happen now is I want them to grow a little bit and then start being pulled toward this back star. And that's how we get this effect here. So let's just add a time test operator here. Um, we can just set the variation to something like five and then go into a new event where it sh they should find their target. So I'll just add a find target operator and pick this little star in the back as the target, right? So already they're being attracted to it. Now, the important thing to remember is that find target is also a test. What you're testing for is whether the particles have reached their target. So what I wanna say now is when the particles reach their target, I want them to be deleted. So I'll just add a delete operator here and connect it to the find target. And I wanna say that if the particles are within 10 centimeters of the star, then they should be deleted. And that's exactly what's happening right now, right? So they reach the star and they die. So to improve this further, I also want the crystals to get smaller over time as they go toward this star. So we can add another scale operator here. Again, we need to set it to absolute and set the timing to continuous. We can just set the scale value to zero. And again, we need to set the interpolation to 0.1, right? So they're born big and then they gradually get smaller until they disappear. Now I think that they begin to get smaller too soon. So we can actually just go under the timing here and set it to event H and just set this to five. So basically what's happening right now, they wait for five frames and after five frames, they begin to get smaller because we defined that this scale operator is only active after the event is between five to thousand frames old. So if I set this to 20, you see that they remain their original size much longer before they begin to get smaller. So I hope that that's clear. 
set it back to five and we can actually increase the variation to five as well. Now we can also add a spin operator to make them spin as they're flying. Maybe set the spin rate to 200 with a variation of 30. Now, if it's confusing you that they're changing colors, you can just copy this yellow color and paste it over here and also um, paste it over here, right? So now you can clearly see what everything is looking like, right? So we're getting something like this, very close to my final result. Now, as sort of a final touch, I also added these um, tie splines in here. So basically, I don't want to create trails behind every single crystal because it gets too heavy. I want to take maybe just 5% of all of these particles and have them create trails. So for that, we can use another test called split test. So let's just add the split test in here, set it to 5%, and I'll add that into a new event. And in this new event, we want to add spline paths. So go to frame zero before you create spline paths. I found that sometimes it can crash unless you're on frame zero. Say create new. And now if you go forward, you should be able to just click on this to show it in viewport. And we are giving birth to some splines over time. Now, because these particles are in this new event, they're no longer being affected by the fine target. So what we need to do is copy the fine target and copy the scale. So just hold shift and drag them into this event. And now everything's working except the trails don't die. So we need to select the tie spline measure, set the radius to just something like 0.1 centimeters, or you can go even less. You can go 0.05, just very thin trails and just go under tie splines and you can either define a maximum distance or maximum H. So if I just set the H to like five or maybe even three, we're getting those um, nice trails happening. Now, as you notice, when they reach the star, they don't die. And that's because this find target is not connected to the deletion event. So I just need to take this and connect it over here. And now those particles will die as well. Again, we can just copy this yellow color and paste it into this event. So all the particles are yellow. And this is basically the setup. So at this point, I will just play with the lighting and the materials a little bit to improve how this looks. Before anything else, don't forget to add a mesh operator everywhere. Um, if you wanna be able to see this in your renderer, make sure you save your work. Now for the material, I'm actually using just this blue tinted glass. You can just enable your V-Ray renderer and open the V-Ray material library. If you're using Arnold or any other renderer, just make basically blue glass. I'll just pick this um, template material and assign it straight to TyFlow. This is the material. You can just pause the video, look at these settings. And then I just want to do sort of like a blue glow for the lines. A V-Ray light material, make it bluish, set the multiplier to something like five and assign it to the tie splines. Now I also want this sort of neon light coming from around the edge of the star. So I will just select the star shape, right click and clone and name this my mesh light. Just make sure that it's a copy and not an instance. So just make unique. Uh, I will just select the original star and hide selection. So all I have now is my mesh light star. And you can just go under create lights, V-Ray, V-Ray light. Just drag one out and set the type to mesh. And then go under mesh light, pick mesh, and pick our mesh light star. So now the whole star geometry is a light. And you can again set this to a nice blue color, maybe set the multiplier to 10. And at this point, we should really look at what this is looking like in render. So actually, I'll just add another V-Ray light just um, to eliminate this from the top. So set this to plane, move this up, scale it up, set the multiplier to something like two, and options make it invisible. And let's enable our V-Ray frame buffer. All right, so we're getting something like this. You can double click on the edge here and enable the lens effects, bloom and glare. 
maybe increase the size, increase the intensity. And I think I want the crystals to glow a little bit too. So you can go back into the glass material and make the self-illumination um, like slightly blue with a multiplier of maybe just like 0.1. Maybe you can do 0.25. And I just think that the mesh light is too thick. So I'll just delete it and let's unhide our original star but i can't edit the thickness of this right now so i'll just take this star in the back hold shift make a copy and then align it to this star and you can just say center center and then match scale on all axes right so we're just getting um this star that we originally had again i'll say enable and render enable in viewport and i want to make it much thinner just 0.5 centimeters so this time let's be smarter and let's just add an edit poly modifier instead of converting it so that we can um, change the thickness of this later if we still need to and i'll go under lights viria light make another mesh light pick mesh pick this thin star and i'll move it back in place hide this one open the vfb we're getting something much nicer. It's just a bit too bright. So I'll just set the multiplier to maybe 10 and change the color again to blue. Maybe let's make everything a bit of a darker blue. Um, reduce this multiplier to 0.1. And I think I'll boost the strength of this top light to like five. Here you go. This is basically my final result. You can play with the lens effects to increase the bloom and glare. Of course, add some contrast. In After Effects, make sure that you create a camera. So Control C on your keyboard and then enable motion blur. And this will give you this nice blur as they're sort of flying away. And one quick thing that I almost forgot, my portal actually opens like the star just scales up. So super simple, you would just unhide the original birth object for the star. Let's disable tie flow while we do this. Um, set auto key, make a key and make move this forward to maybe like frame 10. And then on frame zero, you just want to scale this all the way down. Make a key. You can select them and make them a smooth frame. So just make this auto close. And you have that star scaling up. So now if I enable tie flow again, you can see that our crystals are born and then they continue on their merry way. So that's exactly what I did over here. So as always, I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you did, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be uploading more. Make sure you check out the channel for a ton more tutorials for 3ds Max. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.